You got it. Yeah. So we are sitting here with our second guest this evening, yeah. or our third guest this evening, I should yeah. say. It's been a crazy night. Um, Matthias Kahn from The Burning Hell. Hi, guys. How's Thanks it going? For, it's going great. Thanks for having me on the show again. Always a pleasure. Good. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what have you been up to in the past while since we last spoke? Well, since we last spoke, um, uh, The Burning Hell went on, uh, I think, the, the longest tour we've done yet last summer mm -hmm. we broke a world record that's pretty pretty impressive which is pretty fun mm -hmm. and and we recorded a new album and that album is coming out next month and okay. tonight on the party will be other than cbc music who streamed who are who they're streaming like the first single from the record mm -hmm. this will be the first time this album has been played on the radio cool so that's kind of exciting yeah for me it's very exciting for us too <laughs> Because we can't wait to hear it. We've never heard yeah, it, so really <laughs> it's gonna be yeah, good. Um, so, do, you, do we want to get right into it and, yeah, and hear I, something? Yeah, I really want to hear one of the songs, All so right. then we can talk about it. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're gonna go with, with the first track off the album. Yeah, yeah Grown Ups, it's called, and this is the one that uh, that you can also hear on on CBC Music um, right now. And uh, yeah, it's about I guess it's about avoiding high school reunions and faking your own death. Sounds good. Let's hear it. <laughs> All right. And we're back here on the party. We are. <clears throat> so, That's a great tune. That was. I enjoyed it quite a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, Matthias, would you like to talk a little bit about uh, recording the uh, the album People? Sure. Um, we we uh, were on tour last year yep. um, in, uh, in Europe, and the Euro Cup was on in June. Mm -hmm. And we decided that um, for that month, we would take time off of touring and spend the month in Berlin uh, with a producer there that whose who's work I really like. His name is Norman Nietzsche. And, uh, and so we hung out in Berlin for the month at his studio and, and made the record. And it was so much fun. And at night we went and watched football games uh, and had a great time. And it went super well. Uh, and it was... Kind of, I think the best recording experience I've ever had, probably because we had so much time. Yeah, it's unusual. If, I, I don't think we've ever taken that long to make a record before, and and uh, it it definitely paid off in terms of like not feeling stressed ever and having fun the whole way. Yeah, plus it. Berlin. Plus Berlin, exactly. Euro yeah, exactly. So the <laughs> you know yeah the city was 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 pretty um, excited almost the whole time. Uh, yeah. About about soccer so yeah. yeah do you feel as though that kind of energy translated into your your cd um i think so uh i, I mean i don't know if it's like directly sports related energy <laughs> we definitely weren't too active yeah um, <laughs> month, but uh but yeah i mean I, I think just some of the like the the vibe of the city and mm -hmm. and and you know hanging out with friends and and sort of having a um it felt like a little mini vacation kind of within yeah. the tour and then we went back on tour again after that but uh but um, but yeah, I think some of that energy crept in for sure. Yeah. So, uh, what kind of influences kind of played a part in uh, creating a newest album? Um, there's well, there's a couple of different things. Um, the album is the idea for the album came from uh, uh, the guy that did the cover art, which you can't see because this is radio. But it's very um, nice. I'll well, let you know that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> His name is Gabe Foreman. He's a, uh, an artist and a poet based in Montreal, and okay. uh, he's been a friend friend of mine for ages. And he just two years ago he uh, published his first uh, full poetry collection with Coach House um, in Toronto, and it's called A Complete Encyclopedia of Different Types of People, mm -hmm. and it's hilarious and wonderful. And um, I mean, I'm not an expert on poetry, but I think it's great. Mm -hmm. And I got inspired by it um, reading it on tour actually a couple of years ago. Uh, and then I started thinking, well, I should write some some different types of people songs, and that's sort of where it came from. And the demos for this, some of the demos for this, I made during the RPM challenge last year. Okay. Um, so a lot of those sort of found their way that way. So that that was the biggest influence um, was was his book. And then musically, uh, I this is the first album I've ever uh, basically only played electric guitar on. Mm -hmm. um, the ukulele sort of sat there gathering dust. Uh, <laughs> during the recording session um and i think we had just been listening on tour we've been listening to a lot of uh neil young and a lot of silver jews and 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 uh just like a lot of rock music basically mm -hmm. and so this album is like way more rocky than than anything i've ever done before right so um 
how do you feel that this album uh, differs from, you know, kind of all the other Burning Hell that you've stuff that you've released in the past? Um, I guess this one has like a this one kind of has a concept. I mean, it's called People. Yeah. It's you know, it's about different different kinds of people, uh, and none of the other albums ever had a concept before. So there's that. Um, it definitely it's. I think it sounds the best. Like it's the mm -hmm. best uh, recorded, the best produced yeah. uh, thing we've ever done, um, and it's not as. Oh God, I don't want to, you know, sound like I'm bashing myself <laughs> when I say this, but it's not as jokey. I guess yeah. it's not as like. Although there are some, there's definitely some jokes in there. Yeah. But uh, but it's not as as light light hearted, I guess, as mm -hmm. as the other records. Not okay. that it's not fun. It's fun. <laughs> Don't worry. But. So I think we're gonna take a listen to uh, the second track off the album, if that sounds yeah. good with you. It's called Holiday Makers. Yeah. So is there anything you wanted to say about this track? Yeah. This started um, on the RPM. The, I've only done RPM once, and it was last year, and I had a great time. And this song. Um, changed a lot from the demo uh, version that I did for the RPM to the final version. Um, originally, it was a song about you know two young kids uh, going on summer like on their summer vacation, the last day of their summer vacation, and um, and just kind of you know just about that, just the last day. They're walking around, they're drinking in the hotel room. And that's about it. Um, and I really liked the tune, and I liked like it, it was going. And we were like we were playing with the band, and it sounded it sounded good and. But something was missing, and, I was, and it was the lyrics, and I'm like kind of a lyrics uh, uh, freak yeah. more than anything else. And I realized that the problem was that nothing interesting happened in the song. Yeah. So now the two young lovers are on the last day of their summer vacation, and um, at the moment in the song where they start running away from the train, um, now they die. And... And and then it then it gets weirder from there. So so I think it's 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 kind of taken a, a nice turn in a way. To, to, it's a more interesting song. Sounds like now. a very nice turn. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a happy little tune. Let's hear it. <laughs> and we're back here on the party. Yes, we are. With Matthias Calm, we just heard "Holiday Makers" by yeah. the Burning Hell off their new album, "People." Yes. So you guys got the big tour coming up. Yeah, not too long from now, actually. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, we have a CD, our official CD release show is uh, on the 13th of April at Rocket Room. Mm -hmm. um, and then we sort of have a, a two-week break while La Nivania goes on. And then, and then right after the festival, we leave, um, I think, on the 23rd or something. Okay. So where are you guys hitting up this year? Do you guys have that kind of solid... Oh, yeah. We're, we're doing a short Canadian tour, okay. um, mostly uh, East Coast and uh, Ontario and Quebec, mm -hmm. and then going back to Europe um, for two and a half months. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So... It's uh, fun. Do you guys have any, like, preferred places that you have gone that you just love going back to? We probably all disagree about what that is i definitely have a few um yeah yeah absolutely uh, my fa i think my favorite city in, in germany anyway to go to and to play in is hamburg yeah um it's it's really a great time and a great uh, great music scene there um this time around what's kind of exciting for us is that we're we're spending more time in italy than we ever have before we've mm -hmm. done like a few few shows there but we're doing like a lot okay. of italian shows on this tour um and that's super exciting especially for a bass player who can like I guess like two generations ago his family came from Italy okay. to Canada and so wow. he's like really pumped yeah. to connect with I guess he still has tons of relatives there and stuff like that yeah. so that'll be fun I'm hoping that we're gonna get some home cooked meals out of that connection that, that, <laughs> that's a good hope yeah <laughs> yeah so is are you guys going to uh, anywhere new that you haven't gone to before or is it all um Canada? we're doing a little yeah we're doing a little bit in uh, Croatia and we haven't we've only okay. ever done one show in Croatia before yeah. and so so that's fun uh, we're we're not going to anywhere like completely new yeah um, but we're definitely spending more time in places like uh, France and Italy and Belgium okay. that that we've only sort of done bits yeah before. because I mean like different places there vary so much from oh, absolutely, each yeah. other yeah so um. What is the reception like when you guys go to Europe? It totally depends. Basically, yeah. what you just said. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it you Everywhere. know, place to place, it really varies. Uh, um, we have, like, the most experience we have is in, in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and um, in those countries, it's fantastic yeah. uh, for the most part. Um, there's a, a real uh, supportive music culture there in, mm -hmm. a, in a different way than Canada. Um, uh, and I'm I'm always surprised by how much people listen to the lyrics more so than in Canada. Right. 
Um, maybe that's just a function of you know trying a little bit harder to pay attention to understand. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I always have you know great conversations with people in Germany about about lyrics, mm -hmm. m you know, mine and others, uh, and it feels nice to have people like actually you know pay attention. Yeah. And the nice thing too about about German audiences is that they're totally not afraid to tell you if some if they think something sucks. <laughs> you know, they'll come up to you after the show and be like, "That was great, except I didn't like this part." You know, and why did you do that? I think that was dumb. You know, and they're just to like super <laughs> blunt about it, and they don't mean to be like offensive yeah. or anything. But I really appreciate that kind of honesty. It's much better than a lot of the time in like our culture of politeness here in Canada. Like you play a show, and like everyone, you know, your friends are all like, "That was awesome." Yeah. Like, how was it really? It was awesome. No, really, how was it? What did you think? Oh, it was great. Don't yeah. worry. <laughs> Man, tell me the truth. So that's kind of nice. I yeah. appreciate that. So uh, the last time you guys were in Europe, you guys uh, set a pretty cool world record. Do you want yes. to discuss a little bit about that? Yeah, it was. Um, it's been a, a lifelong, actually almost lifelong dream of mine um, to to attempt some kind of record. Yeah. Uh, and this what this record was the most shows in the most countries in 24 hours. Wow. Um, and we did we did a, a lot of research into it and uh, and a lot of preparation and this uh, French film uh, company came along for the ride mm -hmm. and uh, and filmed the whole thing and right now they're putting they're doing the final edits on right. a little short short documentary about it um, and it was ridiculous we did it in something like 23 hours and 47 minutes Wow um, and so much fun and mm -hmm. such a rush uh, I don't know if I would ever do it again but uh, <laughs> but I'm glad I did you know I'm totally glad I did so, so do you guys yeah. end up in the uh, world record books? Oh, this, or? Is, this is the bone of contention. Uh, um, Guinness's official rules, we tried, but yeah. Guinness's official rules apparently require that as part of your record attempt, you take two commercial flights during that 24-hour period. Really? Which is crazy. Yeah. I guess they want, in, I, they, in their <coughs> idea, I think it's like a safety thing to prevent people from driving super fast. Yeah. Which we didn't. We had a, like a great driver who was mm -hmm. like on the ball and like maybe went like 10 kilometers over the speed limit. But which I mean isn't really that much that's in not Europe. Really speeding. It's no, no, it's, it's, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, so we found this out later and it was a bummer. Yeah. But in the end, we have all this documentary evidence that we did it. Yeah. And so... That's you know, what matters. Guinness can suck it, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> you heard it here on the party. <laughs> Guinness can suck it. <laughs> All right, let's hear uh, the next track off, right. off this album. Uh, it's called Amateur Rappers. One last time with Matthias Kahn. Um What was it we were going to talk about? Uh, just about the, uh, the release party, I believe. Yes. And, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, I just, kind of you know, I just want to remind, remind people... Uh, that the Burning Hell's new CD release party is on April 13th at Rocket Room. Um, and I'm very excited. And is this all ages? Anybody? It is intent? all ages. Okay. Which is why we did it. We, we decided to do that. We almost always play in, in bars. And in the last couple of months, I've had so many people tell me, you guys need to do an all ages show. Mm -hmm. It's so annoying that you never do all ages shows. So there you go. It's all ages. Cool. Awesome. So if um, so, when is the when is the album drop exactly? April sixteenth is the official release date in Canada, 16th. and May sixth in Europe. Cool. Okay, and I guess where can people check that out? Uh, people can um, find it uh, uh, through our website at www.wearetheburninghell.com uh, or in stores, um, iTunes, mm -hmm. the usual suspects. So I assume there's going to be updates about the tour and stuff like that on yeah, your website if you as just, well? Yeah, uh, the Facebook page, uh, which is facebook.com slash theburninghell, and, and then on the website, wearetheburninghell.com, um, with all, that'll be all the tour updates and, and stuff like that. So Okay, perfect. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks so much for having me on the show, guys. Thank you for yes. coming. Thanks, and we'll, uh, I'm sure we'll see you on uh, April 16th? 13th. 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 <laughs> we'll see you on April 13th. 13th. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs>